Alrighty, in this video we're going to put together our controller 2D physics volume. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to modify the parameters of our controller 2D based on um, if a player is in a particular trigger volume or not. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and just <laughs> actually since this is so little code let's go ahead and just write the code first and then I will um, I'll add some water to the level. I know, I know Steve didn't want water in this level, but um, or water you can swim in this level, but it would be a good demonstration for adding water in a level. So let's, let's go into do it. Yes, let's do it. So let's go ahead and go into code and create a new script, and we're gonna call it controller. Ugh, controller. Um, hmm. how about controller physics? volume 2d okay guys you ready for the most complex class that we are going to be doing in this or any of 3d buzz's videos ever nelson i think you're lying to me i don't i don't know i don't know if i this is this is just too much it's just too much <laughs> Yeah, that's basically all we're going to need. Um, the controller, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, controller uh, physics volume, 2D physics volume, is literally just a bucket that we can stuff our parameters into. What we're going to do is the game objects that we create that want we want to turn into a physics volume, we're going to add a box collider to them, then we're going to add this grip to them. And then when the controller enters that volume, um, that trigger volume, they are going to receive a message, and that message will tell them that someone they entered something, and then they're going to check to see if it's a controller physics volume 2D. If it is, it'll pull out the parameters and use them for its overrides. So let's see how that, that'll look. If we jump over into our character controller 2D, scroll all the way to the bound, down to the bottom, you might remember our on-trigger enter 2D and our on-trigger exit 2D. So the onTrigger enter 2D will be invoked by Unity if we enter a trigger volume. So what we're going to do is we're going to say var parameters equals other game object get component controller 2D controller physics volume 2D. Then we're going to say if parameters is null, meaning the object that we just entered the trigger volume for wasn't a controller physics 2D volume controller 2D physics volume 2D no controller physics volume 2D if it's not that then we just want to early exit out if it is that then we want to set our override parameters to parameters dot parameters just a quick over or just a quick reminder of what override parameters is if we scroll up to the top we can see it being um, used in our parameters property remember if our override parameters are set they will override our default parameters. If our override parameters are null, we will use our default parameters. Pretty much the definition of override default. All right, scrolling all the way back down to our onTrigger enter 2D method, that pretty much completes the method. But what if we exit one of these guys? In that case, I'm going to say var parameters equals other game object get component controller physics volume 2D if parameters is null, return override parameters equals null. And that's it. If we enter something, if we enter a trigger, and that object has a controller physics volume 2D attached to it, we set those parameters to our override parameters. If we exit a volume, uh, then our controller physics volume 2D, if, if that object exists on the object that we exited, then we set our override parameters to null. And that is literally all we need to do. So let's create some swimmable area. Let's come back into our game. And um, let's go over here and let's bring in some of that water stuff. So I'm going to go and open up textures. And I'm going to open up uh, Texture Atlas Main. And I'm going to do Water Trap. And I'm going to set Water Trap to have a uh, sorting layer of let's say foreground well foreground goes over the player doesn't it i forget no player goes over the foreground okay so that should be good 
Um, then I'm just going to make it big. Yes, it's a bit ugly, but it'll... It'll work. I'm just being a little lazy right now. So let's just actually make the water like that. That's really unrealistic, but I'm a programmer and anything's possible. Okay, so now we have this weird column of water here, but it's right now it's just a texture. Let's go ahead and turn it into a trigger volume. I'm going to say add component, box collider, box collider 2D, which will add a box collider to it. Next up, I want to make sure that the box collider is set to is trigger. Finally, all I need to do is add a controller physics volume 2D component to this game object. Open up its parameters, and let's change its parameters some. Let's give it a gravity of, how about negative 2? Let's specify that you can jump anywhere, but you can only jump every half second and your jump magnitude is restricted down to 3. Basically, I've just re-implemented Flappy Bird with my controller physics volume. <laughs> so let's go ahead and um, hit play and see what happens. As you see, oh, I keep on hitting that. There's a, there's a platform that keeps on hitting me. But if I come over here, I shouldn't hit that platform. So now you see that our parameters for our trigger volume have actually been modified just by being inside of this object. If I go out of the object, look what happens. Everything just returns to normal. If I go into it, then my gravity has changed as well as my ability to jump. And the jump platform just literally ran into me. I don't know how I keep on hitting that. I can't even see it. I'm just that good, apparently. <laughs> All right, so that basically is our controller physics volume 2D, just a, a very nice little feature that we can add that we'll be using for modeling our, our water physics. Um, and also it shows us that we can model multiple different kinds of physics depending on where we are in the level by using bounding volumes to determine that. So I'll go ahead and delete that. All righty. So, you know, I think this pretty much wraps up our character controller 2D. And writing character controllers is something that's incredibly important. You, you, you'd expect something like, you know, Unity to come with everything you would need to make, you know, X amount of games. But in reality, you really need to understand these concepts because not every game is the same project. And even the standard built-in assets that come with Unity sometimes don't necessarily um, mesh well with what you're trying to accomplish. And in those cases, understanding the concepts behind creating a character controller is incredibly important because you might want to either modify one that you have uh, found online, for example, or just create one from scratch, like what you saw us do in this video, uh, in these last couple of videos. So yeah, I mean, overall, I, I'm liking how it's going. It's uh, doing everything it's supposed to. It's allowing us to um, add in some additional interesting features like jump pads and all that fun stuff. And yeah, I think this pretty much wraps up what we want to do with our character controller. Yeah, I think we're pretty good to go. Now we just want to sit around and jump on these platforms. <laughs> all right, close out the video. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's only going to get worse the farther in we get. Oh, I know. <laughs> We've nope. been down this road. Oh, come on, I know I can get onto that second platform. <laughs> ah, well, def. Uh, okay, we'll see you guys in the next video.